goodness of God. Hello, everybody. It's time for the word of the Lord. I know we've been waiting to hear what the Lord would say, like Habakkuk. Let's watch and see what the Lord will say. He's so faithful. I thank God that he's given another word, uh, manna, hidden manna. Remember he said, I will give you hidden manna to eat. I will speak directly from the throne into the heart of my sons and daughters. And so today we get to hear what the Father is saying. Amen. But there are things that happen in our life that literally blindside us. To blindside means to come from a, an attack that comes from a, a place we didn't know it was coming from. There are things that come at us so hard that it literally knocks us off our feet. And to blindside means a hit or an attack you didn't see coming. We didn't see some things that are happening right now coming. It means to attack from an unexpected position. To stun. To shock. To catch unaware. We can all say that we have experienced that personally in our life. And we can all say that we are experiencing it nationally and globally right now. We're being blindsided by some things. Even though we're in the realm of the spirit, of course, we can always be deeper. But th there are things happening in life right now that are literally blindsiding us. Things just in our blind side. And when life throws a hardball, if you've ever played softball or hardball or anything like that, and you got hit by that ball in the head, it smacked you down to the ground. You didn't know what was happening. And sometimes a hit that hard can throw us off. Yeah. That the only thing we feel is the sting of that hit. And the bruise of that hit. That's all. The, everything else in life is gone except for that pain. And then it hit us. It blindsided us. We lose focus of everything else. We lose focus and we lose judgment and we, become, we get into a place called tunnel vision to where all we can see is that event, that circumstance, that thing that knocked us out, that pain that we're experiencing, and all we can feel is the pain of the hit. And we only see one thing, our current condition. That's all we can see. We're blindsided by everything else. The hit blindsided us and now our all we can see, all we have narrow vision is that pain, that hurt, whatever attacked us, and we can't see anything else. Our judgment is gone. All we can see is that thing. And we lose focus of everything but our current state of mind. Our current emotional state. We lose our sense of everything else except the pain, the loss, the anger of whatever we're going through becomes our world instead of an event that happened, instead of a situation that happened. A lot of times we can't just slough it off. We stay right there in that pain. And we can be left with the question, where is God in this? When you get blindsided. Where is God in this? Where is God in this pandemic that blindsided us? Where is God in, in what is happening in our country with all of the uh, peaceful demonstrations and, and many that have turned violent? Where is God in this? This can cause us to take our eyes off the goal, off of where we were going, and stop right in the place we were hit. And focus on the hit mm -hmm. instead of the goal. Worse yet, events like this can cause us to take our eyes off the Lord, yes. even though we are the Lord's. <sighs> 
sometimes what's happening takes up all the space, so to speak, that we don't have space to think about anything else. Sometimes what's happening around us is our whole world. When God is our life. Sometimes the suffering of the time that we're going through is all we can see. We're trying, we can't unsee it. We can't unsee the news. We can't unsee everything that's happening. I can't unsee my pain. I can't unsee my frustration. I can't unfeel it. I've been hit with a hardball in the head. I can't unsee it. And it can bring us into a dangerous place of not being able to see God in it. What is God saying in all of this? In all of this that's happening, I believe the Lord is saying, never forget. Never forget. Never forget what? Don't let this thing blindside you from seeing me. Don't let this thing blindside you any further. Don't let it blindside the realities of life that are beyond the current episodes and conditions of what's in your face. Because you have to see beyond the temporal into the eternal. You have to see beyond everything that's happening. We cannot allow the realities of this life to be the only focus we have because we've got to keep our eyes on the Lord. We've got to still see that God is omnipotent. That God is omniscient. We've got we've to separate everything for a moment just to say you're still in control. You're still God. When the children of Israel left Egypt, they were happy to leave. They were ready to be free and <laughs> jubilant. And three days journey and they ended up at the Red Sea and they started complaining. Because all of a sudden impossibilities were in front of them. And they began to question their leader. Why did you take us this way? Because it was the way that God wanted them to be taken. Amen. And suddenly their excitement turned into fear of the unknown. Why? Because they didn't trust God. They didn't trust Him. They didn't know Him. They hadn't been serving Him. And He was teaching them how to follow Him. The complaining, the murmuring, all because of one thing. They didn't trust him. They didn't know if he had a handle on it. And we can be that same way in our world right now. With everything that's going on. Oh, it's all out of control. It's chaos. Well, God is in control. <sighs> they made it through the Red Sea, the biggest miracle of all time. I mean, God split the waters. They heaped up and stood up. Miracle. I mean, they, they could probably see, it's like our modern day aquariums, they could probably see whale in there, in the walls yes. and sharks yes. and fish looking at them, and they just walked right on through. An unprecedented miracle. A couple days later, after they were walking in the wilderness, murmuring and complaining again. Why? Because they looked at the hardball that hit them in the head. Yes. Here they were in a wilderness. They were blindsided again by circumstances, by dry conditions, no water. They started complaining again because they took their eye off the God that just yeah. set them free. As if they needed another miracle. As if he needed to prove himself once again. And they're murmuring and complaining and God comes down and judges them. Sometimes God has mercy, but sometimes he has to judge us before it goes like wildfire through the camp. <sighs> they began to say, we want to go back. We want to go back where it's not so difficult. We want to go back where we were comfortable. At least we had water. At least we had food. Complaining against the sovereign God who made the earth. Who made the fruit of the earth? Who made water? As if he couldn't produce water. If he could give them water in slavery, he could certainly give them water in freedom. Yeah. Hey, Hallelujah. he certainly could. 
Yes. They didn't trust them. America, are we trusting God? They didn't know him. They didn't trust him. Their response to the situation caused judgment. God rebuked them. He said, have you forgotten how I carried you on eagle's wings? Have you forgotten how I led you out and I covered you with the cloud by day and the fire by night? And it was darkness to one and light to the other. Have you forgotten? It was just uh, how many days ago? Have you forgotten when Moses put the staff in the water? Have you forgotten that quick? I am your God. Yes. I created all the waters of the earth. Can I not also quench the thirst of my children? Do you not know that I'm in the midst of you? And whatever you think is a blindsiding situation that's just causing you not to see anything but what's in front of you that's trying to limit you, that's trying to make you forget me. Never forget that I'm the God who carried you out on eagle's wings. Thank you, Lord. In contrast, when Job experienced loss, anytime I ever see anybody compare themselves to Job, I'm like, no, I'm sorry. What happened to Job did not happen to you. What happened to Job was more than anybody of us could ever think happened in a day. There might be some similarities, but what happened to Job, I mean, it touched every part of his life. Because God was proving how faithful he was. And so Job, when he experienced loss unspeakable, he wasn't like the children of Israel. He fell on his face and he offered thanks. And he offered praise. And he offered worship. And he said, Lord, everything I have, basically, you gave me. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. He worshiped. He was showing the world a pattern that when all is taken, I mean, he was hit from every side. Every side he could see from now became blind, a blind side. He was hit before one finished telling him what was. Another one came and he was blindsided. He was hit from every side. Every aspect of his life was being destroyed. And he fell on his knees. He didn't didn't scream out, God, where are you? He fell on his knees and he said, though you slay me, ah, I will worship you. This was a man who everything he had belonged to God. That's why he could say that. How can you say that when your children die? Because, Lord, you gave them to me and now you've taken them away. He knew something that most of the world doesn't know. That there's an antidote to the poison that comes from being blindsided. There's an antidote. God has given us an antidote or vaccine to the pain that life can hurl at us. Jesus. He knew Job taught us. He trained us. We ought to be better than this. That when life, and we we succumb to nothing compared to him. But that when life throws us a hardball, we can't figure out what's going on. And it looks like all of our resources are being compromised. There ought to be somebody that ought to follow Job and fall on their knees immediately. Because it's such a lifestyle to him that he didn't have to go, what do I do? I don't know what to do. He knew to fall to his knees and say, I worship you. I worship you right now. All that I have came from you. All that I am belongs to you. I live and die for you, Lord. He knew the antidote was praise and thanksgiving. He knew in the middle of loss and pain. He knew how to provoke heaven to be on his side. Jesus. 
There's an antidote to the poison that our nation is experiencing right now. There's an antidote to the poison that we're experiencing in our personal life. And it's called, it's time to fall on our face and worship him and thank him. And give him a rightful offering, an acceptable offering. An acceptable offering. Nobody even talks about that anymore. God is looking for an acceptable offering. And wherever he gets that acceptable offering, this is what happened. Heaven comes down and answers the offering. The angel armies of heaven are loosed in the earth. Woo! Warring angels are loosed when they see somebody who's lost everything. And they fall to their knee in their pain and say, I worship you right here. This is the righteous offering. To remember him and his goodness in the middle of trouble. To remember how he's been there for you before. To remember God. He's just looking for somebody when everything else is confronting them to remember. Didn't Jesus say, remember me as often? Remember. They remember. Job remembered, I am the Lord. Everything I have is the Lord. Daniel remembered, if I die, I die. The, the, the three Hebrew boys, if God is able to deliver, but if he doesn't, they remember the Lord. Thank you, God. This is the righteous offering to remember the Lord, to never forget the goodness of God in the middle of evil and bad evil, wrongful, sore situations. When the offering is acceptable, God comes down. Kingdoms are subdued. Doors are open. Yes, are. When one person when one person worships the right way, God starts moving. Yes, he does. Ooh, the dead are raised. Plagues are stopped. Yes. Mm. When one person gives a, a rightful offering, an acceptable offering to the Lord, not to mention praise and worship. Yes. Praise wraps our hand around yes. the neck of the enemy. Yes, God. Why wouldn't we praise God? Why wouldn't we thank Him? In all things, God says, give thanks. Even in the worst of times, give thanks to me. I'm moving on your behalf. You just can't see it. Give thanks to me. This is the antidote. He's moved at the voice of thanksgiving. He's moved when He sees you broadsided, blindsided. He's moved when you still look up to Him. He's moved when you say you're still good and, and I don't care if I have nothing left as long as I have you. He's moved at the voice of thanksgiving. When someone thanks Him in the storm, He takes it personal. When somebody thanks him in the storm, God takes it personal. He's a personal God. He's your personal Savior. Yes. He takes it personal. Yes. Oh. And heaven takes notice. David declared in Psalm 9, 1, I will. It means you turn your will over. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all the wonderful things you have done. God is looking for somebody in the midst of the chaos to start rehearsing the long list of all the good things that God has done in our country. The long list of all the things God has done in your personal life. Ezra rehearsed in Israel's hearing, along with the Levites and the priests, that he began to rehearse in the, in the scroll everything that God did for Israel. He caused them to remember. He was basically saying, never forget what the Lord has done. Don't ever forget. Don't let the violence of life cause you to forget the triumph of the Lord. In your life he's, life, he's delivered you many, 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 many times yes, out of chaos and out of trouble. 
He's a good God. He, he comes where we are. He comes yeah. to the lowest of the lowest places. Saves us and rescues us. Thank you, Lord. Ezra rehearsed. He understood something about remembering God. Remember what God, remember how he brought us out. Remember how he carried us on eagles. You have to keep rehearsing that. Israel rehearses all the time to their children what God did thing after thing after thing after thing that he did. In Acts 16, Paul and Silas are put in jail because they're preaching the gospel. And it says that they beat them with stripes for telling people Jesus Christ saves. If you're going to go to jail for anything, yes. if you're going to be persecuted for anything, let's do it for the gospel yes. of Jesus oh. Christ. Oh, and they prayed, and they, they were whipped and put not in prison, but in the inner prison yes. where nobody could get to you. That's right. But those people who locked them up didn't understand that Paul and Silas had yes. a God. Yes. That could pass through walls. Yes. That could pass through atmospheres, yes. through stratospheres. Yes. But they had a God who was yes. not limited yes. through space and yes. time. Yes. They didn't know that. Yes. But Paul and Silas didn't complain and say, Why, Lord, are we here? Where are you, God? We were preaching that we were doing. They understood. Let's praise him. Let's pray in the deepest prison. And let's worship him. And let's sing songs to him. Ooh, let's remember our God. We shall never forget. We shall never forget the good. I was with him. I saw him. I saw the mighty works of Jesus. I will suffer for his name's sake. They didn't collapse like we do. Sackcloth and ashes going, where is God? God was in them. God was with them. In the prison. And they knew it. Maybe some of us ought to reevaluate who's with us in prison. Yes, Lord. And they prayed, said they prayed, and they sang praises to the Lord, and suddenly an earthquake. Who do you think caused that earthquake? Come on, people! If we would ask God to intervene in America, mm. he would. Mm. Yes, he would. Yes. Yes. Suddenly an earthquake. Quake came and everything shook and it loosed them from their chains. There they were free in the prison guard. Panicked and found a light and came and found them and they weren't trying to escape. And the prison guard saw that they were free and that chains were broken and he fell at their feet. Uh, you want to know how you can preach the gospel? Right there in prison. Wherever you are. You can make it a tabernacle of the yes, presence God. of God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, whether God. they were in prison God. or out of prison, they preached the gospel. Thank you, Lord. And whether they were in hard times, whether they were in darkness, right. they were in darkness, they were with rats and feces, and they worshiped God. God. Have you been surrounded by rats and feces? I don't think your situation is as bad as theirs were. So come on, give him a praise. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Woo! We will not be spoiled any longer. Yes, Lord. Mm. The prison guard fell at their feet and said, What must I do to be saved? Is that what we're doing to the world? That our testimony, whether we're in, whether we're abounding or whether we're abased, they can see Jesus in it all. And they come to us and go, what must I do to be saved? I want to serve this God that you're serving. Because in the middle of your darkest day, you're in here singing praises to him. Yes, that's right. Thank you. And he came down just for you. I know this earthquake was not a coincidence. And the guard said, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And look, and you and your family shall be saved. So according to scriptures, he took them out of the prison and brought them to his house and cleaned their wounds. 
Tell me God won't come see about you. Tell me that God won't send arm, ar angel That's armies right. to you. Yes, Tell me that God won't come to you. Hallelujah. Yes, he will. He will. Because the prison guard take you to your house and wipe your wounds for you. And they preach the whole house into salvation. Yes. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is what praise and thanksgiving will do in your darkest time when you've been blindsided yes. by life. In the midst of it all. In the midst of all that is happening in the world Thank today. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is asking the question, who do you say that I am? Can you still see me? Are you glued to the world events? I want you to understand them, but I want you to be glued to one thing. That's me. You'll take your eye off of me for one second and chaos will yes. knock you upside your head. You'll be blindsided again by one thing on Facebook. It'll, it'll make you hot for the day. Who do you say that I am? Are you asking where am I? Or are you like Silas and Paul and Ezra and David and Solomon and Ezekiel and all of those who knew me? Do you trust me? Do you know that I could never forsake you? That your name is written in the palm of my hand? Do you know that I walk among you? He's saying I am the same God who delivered you your whole life from that car accident when you were thrown out the window. When you were thrown out the door, I was there. I'm the same God in your chaos when you were drinking and getting high, and I saved you from an overdose. I'm the same God. Yes. Rehearse all the encounters I have engaged in in your life where I came to you, where I saved you, where I gave you the money you needed yes. not to lose your house, yes. where I blessed you. Yes. I'm the same God that delivered you Hallelujah. your whole life. Yes. And Jesus said, I am coming, and I am coming quickly. And when I return, will I find faith in the earth? Oh, God, I pray so, Lord. Will I find you in faith, or will you be glued to something else? Will I find you still walking, searching after me in the middle of all everything that comes to cut you off from me? Will I find you able to keep your focus and pray with me for one hour? Will I find those who are walking by faith? Will I find those who are living by faith and walking by my spirit? Hello, church. We've got to walk by the spirit right now. It's very important. People keep asking me every week, what is the Lord saying? I said the same thing he said last week. The same thing he said the week before. This is a time God is sheltering his people. It's a time that God is covering his people. His people of covenant, covenant are staying under the shadow of his wing. He's carrying us on eagle's wings right now. We have this one life to live. We have this one life to live. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. To live for him yes. with all our might. Yes, God. I know the world has got a lot going on, mm -hmm. but we have a God who created this world, yes. Yes. who is to be the center focus. Yes. Yes. We have one life to live, yes. and it's to be lived for him with yes. all of our might, yes. with all of our yes. strength. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. We will give our life to him. Yeah. We will not allow this to shatter our focus. We can look so much at what the world is doing that we cannot, we cannot have the strength and the fortitude to walk by the Spirit, and therefore we can be of no earthly good. Yes. Sometimes we can stare at the world so much that when God wants to, we're in the flesh. Yeah. We've got to walk by the Spirit. What are you going to do with this one life that you have to live 
Will you live it for Him with all your might yes. and all your strength? He's not hiding. He's right in front of us. We have to step aside to look at everything else because He's saying, here I am in the midst of you. Never forget how He delivered you 20 times yes. in yes. your life. 40 times, 100 times. Never forget for the same God who delivered you from that disease that you had, delivered you from hypoglycemia, delivered you from smoking. Remember the same yes, Jesus Lord. who delivered you from smoking, yes. delivered you yes, from drinking, yes, delivered you from an abusive relationship. Yes, that same Jesus will deliver you now. Yes, he will. Yes. He's the same God. Yes. He's your Savior. <laughs> Never forget, you may be facing sickness right now and a horrible report. Don't be blindsided by the report. <sighs> Don't sit in the pain. Be like Paul and Silas and begin to praise him in the report. I'll praise you in this report. Open your eyes wide and remember the God who healed you before. Yes, yes Lord. Remember when he healed you of a broken foot and a broken heart. How many times did he heal our broken heart? Yes. Hallelujah. He's not only the God who sees, he's the God who heals. Yes. Yes. And he has healed us over and over again. Why will he not also heal us now? God. He's also the God who avenges our enemies for us. Israel understood that and they lifted up his presence. They didn't go out, you know, just striking. They lifted up the ark and said, Arise, O Lord. We lift you up before us and scatter our enemies. I would that the priesthood of America would lift up the ark yes, of his presence and yes, say, Lord over America, yes, Lord. arise, O oh Lord, and scatter your enemies. Yes, Every now and then in our priesthood of, as a believer, we ought to just lift up the ark of his presence and say, arise, O oh Lord, and scatter all my enemies. Yes. Scatter your enemies because your enemies are my enemies. Yes. Never forget, he's the God who vindicates. <laughs> he's the God who rewards. Never forget how good he's been to you. Never forget. He's the God who speaks to you when no one else will. Never forget this God. Never forget his whole life, just look back right now and remember. Never forget how he came to rescue you time and time again. Never forget he laid down his life for this cause, for what cause? For every cause that's happening in the world. He so loved, God so loved the what? The world that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus died for what's going on in the world right now. For in this cause I laid down my life. For every evil in the world and every evil inside every one of us. He laid it down and he said, I'll give my life. He said, take me. I will become sin for them. I will be bruised and beaten for them so that they may be healed. I will take on every disease. I'll take on every sickness. I'll take on every disorder. I'll take on every evil. Yes, God. This I do for you. Yes. What is happening in the world is so huge right now. Yes, yes. That only an omniscient, omnipresent, sovereign God who is, is big enough to heal it, to heal the world. Only he can heal. Yes. That's why Jesus went to the cross. Yes. 
Let's lift up the cross of Jesus Christ over our nation. Just like they did when they planted that cross in Virginia Beach. Let's keep lifting up the cross of Jesus Christ and everybody who looks at it will be healed. What are we going to do with this big God of ours? Who is interested and involved in every one of our affairs. Every one of our life. He knows the number of hairs on our head. This God knows our beginning and our ending. He knows every nation. He knows everything. What are we going to do with this great big God of ours? He's the only one who can heal our world. We choose not to forget and we remember his goodness. We're going to let him be big. And we're going to let him, we're going to lift him up. We're going to lift him up and draw. He will draw all men. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. When this pandemic first began, as I went before the Lord just day after day, he would begin to just show me these glimpses of, of moments it, throughout my life, through my whole childhood, adulthood, where he came to my rescue. And I couldn't figure it. And I'd say, oh, God, yes, I remember that. Thank you so much. And it was like he would just pop it like a glimpse. Yeah. And then the next day I'd see another glimpse where he healed me of hypoglycemia. Mm -hmm. Just stood me up in a church and said, stand up right now, I'll heal you. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I had to eat every two hours. Mm -hmm. It was just something weird that came on me. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he healed me on the spot. He healed me of so many things. He kept showing me day after day. And finally I said, Lord, what are you doing? He said, I'm causing you to remember. Because with what's going on in the world right now, you could look so much at that that you'll get swallowed up in it. And it will be so big that it will become bigger than me. Yes. So I'm causing you to remember. Begin to pray. Yes, Lord, you healed me then. You'll heal me now. The same yes. God who rescued me yes. then will rescue now. The same yes. God who delivered a nation will deliver a nation again. Yes. And so I've been doing that for 12 weeks. I don't know what y'all been doing. But I've been remembering the yes. goodness of God. Yes. And every time he shows me something, I praise him and say, Lord, the same way you did it then, you'll do it today. You are the same God. It's time for us to rehearse. Yes. It's time for us to rehearse. It's time for us to say, I will never forget. I will never, never forget how you yes, carried Lord. me on eagle's yes, wings, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ooh, but you're the same God and you'll do it again. Yes, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, thank we you, thank God. you so much. We will not lose sight of you. We will not allow the affairs of this world to blindside us anymore. We set our gaze upon you, Lord, and we will never forget how you carried even our nation on eagle's wings and how you've carried us all. You have carried us. You have hidden us. You have healed us. You've delivered us. You've rescued us. you filled us. You gave us salvation. We will never forget. We will never forget, God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We will never forget.
sing of the goodness of God.